Hey, hey kids, you uh, you trying to get into Segment City? Well, you really shouldn't, because Segment City is a mature podcast, and listener discretion is advised. I'm just trying to look at, I know I'm in an alleyway, I know, I know how I look, but I got some fireworks for you kids. I got snakes and I got sparklers, that's all I got. Oh, don't give me that. Hi, Theo. It's been a while since we recorded. No, it no, hasn't. It hasn't. Exactly <laughs> Stop hey, lying. So I <laughs> was picking up food the other day, uh huh. And um, I pulled over my car, and yeah. Laura hopped out to go grab the food. Uh huh. And while I was sitting there, and she was like in in the restaurant grabbing food, like getting our takeout order, a guy just walks by my open window and just goes, "Groob hub, groob hub, <laughs> groob hub." <laughs> Grubub. <laughs> and I just sit there dying and I had to roll up the window because I was laughing so much about this man just saying Grub <laughs> And then Laura, sh- Laura gets back at the car and I was like, uh-huh. the strangest thing just happened to me. This man just started screaming Grubhub right outside the window and she was like, Uh-huh. And I was like, What do you mean? <laughs> that can't just be an uh-huh statement. <laughs> I mean, how do you respond? I'm I'm going through my mind of like, okay, what's the the? I was gonna joke about the the delivery of that story. It's it goes into the Theo doing <laughs> stories like stand up bits of like, so I was out with my girlfriend and That's we're right. getting takeout, and, and then a man came up and he said group up, group and I'm up. like, what's up with that? Am I right? Well, am honey? I right? What's the deal? What's the deal? And then and then she said, like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. That was basically. the whole experience. Yeah. So it was just, that guy was hub. really into Group Hub and now now I guess I have to call it Group Hub and nothing else because Are you sure he was saying better. Group Hug? Group hug. Group hug. Maybe if he thought he was just thinking if he went out around advertising that he was looking for a group hug, someone might uh mm-hmm. get get on in there. Mm-hmm. Group hug. Group hug. I like that. <laughs> it's a very positive <laughs> message. Don't go up and hug him though, because he Don't do it. He might be he might have coronavirus. Oh, I can't say that. I can't say coronavirus. Why not? I don't I don't know. People on YouTube can't. I remember because they're whenever people talk about uh, Corona, they act like it's the Super Bowl of like you can't call it the Super Bowl. You have to call it like the big game. <laughs> you gotta call so they're it, just like, oh, oh the pandemic. That that big old soup server, you know, yeah, the one you know, I'm the, big, about. the big soup server, the big super, the very big bowl the, is you, here, everybody. You know that you know that dip you were going to bring to the big party. It's Not anymore. Served, it's served in a container in a vessel. That, mm-hmm. but a big one. Think about that. That that dip not going to the Super Bowl. It's going to the gigantic can- container for. There's no other word for bowl, is there? Mm, no, there There's isn't. Not really another. I, word. I was like, <laughs> thank you for offering that rope to me. Yeah, I, I, I started was, going, I and I was like, it. wait, I, like, I, I don't know what else you call a bowl. It's just, it's just a bowl. A, a shallow cup. A, a wide mouth vase. Yes, all of those things here on Segment City. Welcome to Segment City, Segment everybody. Fourteen-time host of the Ultra Vase. Yes. What? I don't know. It's not. All the, right. It's not the Super Bowl. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. And oh, I, I thought you were making a reference to like a different kind of bowl. No. Uh, this is a podcast in which Theo and I come up with different names for the Super Bowl. That's it. That's the whole podcast. That's Thanks for it. listening. Thanks for tuning in. The Mega Cup. Uh, Ooh, that's a good one. No, this is about Theo and I creating segments each week. They are on a variety of subjects, but it's whatever we want to talk about. We just want to make you guys laugh and surprise each other. So, But this is not surprising. I start every week with a Will Stupid Thought. Clearly. Clearly, uh, it's not surprising anymore. No one's surprised, Will. N- oh, shush you. Shush you. Oh, shush you. Shush. Stop it. You stop mocking me. My father. My father will hear about this, but you'll also hear about this this good segment. Uh, Will Super Thought for this week 
is people can't deal with more than one crisis at a time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Singular <laughs> point of focus. You want me to focus on two things? Can't that, do it. sir, is one too many. You have crossed the line. This, this obviously has to do with modern times, but mm-hmm. I think it applies to a lot of different things, especially on the internet. Yeah. Where everybody has an opinion about everything, and everyone thinks that we should have a new revolution over a new thing. What's Every the hill day. you want to die on? I don't know, because it's going to change by tomorrow. Every day, it's just like, hey, we need... Like, you hear all these different things from different groups of people who are like, "I okay, we should start thinking about this. We should start thinking about that. And I'm like, I'm, I can't. Can I we can't. just focus I, on already, one thing? You already got me started thinking about one thing. Listen, I'm a white guy. I have no, like existential battles other than my own (laughs) like being first world problems i have nothing so it's like okay tell me what i should be looking at never goes but he goes (laughs) and i'm just like i I can't right now (laughs) and then i just sit in my chair and i go "Mm." (laughs) you make yourself sound very unavailable you're like tell me what to focus on no i won't focus no i won't do it (laughs) i can't do it but of course this has to do with uh current situation having to do with Corona was uh, the biggest thing, but it now was, it's out. It was. <laughs> corona, out. It's out. That's It's not the it thing it's anymore. It's so yesterday. The new it thing is Black Lives Matter. And That's that, right. And I mean that to be that uh, joke <laughs> of being the it thing, but it kind of isn't. People, for some reason, are going back to the thought, people can't, people in my neighborhood have stopped wearing masks almost completely. It feels like these two ideas can coexist. Absolutely, they can coexist. The only reason, like, the reason that Black Lives Matter is going so hard is because of COVID. Oh, absolutely. I read a little think piece about this, about how, like, this there's, is like a whole, there's a whole thing about, you know, Americans are, you know, placated by, ha- by, by, like, generally speaking, in normal non-COVID times, there's a lot to distract you. Like, you have your yeah. work. And a lot of people work paycheck to paycheck, so they are exhausted by their work all the time. Okay, well, now that's gone because you're out of a job. Then, okay, next to that, we have our entertainment. We have our sports. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you're placated by sitting at home and watching your sports and talking about them on the internet. Okay, well, now that's gone. Okay, so now people are in a state of unease already about their job and their entertainment being gone. And now you're going to, like, bring up social injustice. And people are like, yeah, let's get involved. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. it's crazy to me that uh, history always repeats itself because... The ancient Romans had a phrase for this, which is bread and circuses. You mm-hmm. need to provide people with bread and circuses. So if you don't is, give that, right. then they'll rebel. Right. And we don't have any bread or circuses. Right. So of course we're going to like rise up. That's how it's always worked. Right. That's like the the worker bee has to have something to do, and when we don't, and I I think it is long overdue. Because there are certain problems in society that I always think, like, how have we not fixed this? This is so, like, basic problems. Why can nobody agree on this? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just one of those. And I think people people are, like, somebody I know was like, oh, do you guys want to go to, like, a restaurant soon? And I'm like, no. Not really. I know they just opened up, like, indoor dining for, for our area, kind of. They're um, coming up but to I'm was like, it a today or something. It was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do still, that. No, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm definitely not going to do I'm it. I'm not even, even outside stuff. I'm like, listen, pe- people, everyday people don't give a shit. Like, I know businesses are going to be a little bit better about this, but also I feel like certain businesses are already going to be going back to like the way things were. Everyone just wants to go back to the status quo, even though yeah. the status quo has changed. Agreed. I, it's weird for me because it's like I really enjoy going and diff- eating at different places and going to restaurants and stuff. And yeah. even right now, hearing the places are opening back up, I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. No, I not can't, at all. Not at all. I'm. I'm. It's going to change how I live my life for a while. I think. I think so too. Even though other people are like, this won't change. Like, I want to go and go to the barber. And it's like, I just had my dad cut my hair. I'm going back to that. <laughs> I had that for the first like 20 years of my life, and now I'm back. <laughs> There was you got one solid good year of outside haircuts <laughs> of, of buying my own. Oh, okay. This is this is a first world problem having to do with COVID. I had a coat that I got from uh my grandpa's place uh when when we were cleaning the place out, and I'm like, this is a cool hipster coat. Like it was an old man's coat. It's one of those jackets that mm-hmm. uh 
looks good on on young people as well as old people. And it makes I a brought graceful it... transition from yeah from grave to cradle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am in the cradle. That's true. Um, and I brought it to the local dry cleaners, just being because I'm like, it smells like old man. I can't do this. I want um, to smell like young man. And they're like, okay, so this is leather, and I'm like, I mean, it's kind of leather. It's kind of that like. Uh, what's it called? It's not like pl- it's it, it it didn't feel like to- it's not like a leather coat. It's like, like one of faux those leather. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, and I like the idea I, of you you going to the lawn, to the dry cleaner and handing them the coat and them going, "This is leather," and you being like, "Well, I, I mean, I kind of really. I'm like I was just like I mean, sure, <laughs> like you probably know your business enough to look at it and go, no, "This is leather." Like, you're standing there like. I'm gonna tell you what this is made of. It's made of velvet, not you leather. Can, you can look at it, and it it is kind of, it was kind of that velvety leather. Mm-hmm. Let's go with that. Um, that coat has been gone for a month or more now, and because they're every time I go there, they give me a different date that it's gonna get there, <laughs> and it that that annoys me than if they just gave me the end date because they use the same excuse on me twice of hey because of Corona the the place that we send this to isn't in, like working so we just the the they told told me a while ago they just got it and they're working on it now and i went okay and then they're working what is working on it mean just cleaning it i don't know they sent it to a how different much, place how much and then i <laughs> smell was up in that up in that coat i i came back on like last thursday and i was like hey you got it and they're like come back saturday and i was like all right and then i came back saturday and they're like my manager will call you and i'm like what, what? and now they're what? just like they're like hey it'll be done in like two weeks <laughs> I'm like I've already waited like a full month plus. Anyway, this is just us. You know what happened? I just was wasted a bunch they, of uh, minutes on this. They podcast. took the they took the coat on a, a vacation pre COVID, and oh. it, and they're not coming back till everything's oh, cleared no. up. You're not getting yeah. that coat back until after they're back from vacation because they took it. Well, now, hey, guess what? We're gonna go on a vacation to your segment. <gasps> a vacation to my segment. Yeah. Hello, Will. It is me, Steve Harvbot. I am here to give you a segment about Steve family <laughs> about family feud written by a Twitter <laughs> bot. Okay, okay, great. I thought this was just gonna be a random bit that nope. you're just like I'm Steve Harv- Harvbot. Bot. That could be my, my new mustache. Hello. I, I, I have perfected have, the look <laughs> we have when people a, say weird stuff. We have a insert adjective one for you today. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm going to read this. This is uh, one of those things where a bot watched over a thousand hours of Family Feud and then mm-hmm. wrote a thing. It's probably fabricated. I still think no, it's they, funny. They, they at least edit it. Yeah, they it's at funny. Least edit it. All right. Family Feud. Inside of an area of household anger. Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Harvey. Judger of families. Sends his body onto the stage. His family. Two families exist. Smith family and family two. <laughs> We're the family two. It's only the two of us here. We got the Smith family and the family two. <laughs> I, I like him on his big po- his judge podium. That's my favorite part of Family Feud. Judger and then he, of and he throws his body down and he rolls and he goes, I'm here. I will <laughs> judge you. I will judge you now. Steve Harvey. The feud begins. One family will win the car. One family will become <laughs> the car. Bring me your fathers. <laughs> One family to rule them all. One family to guide them. Bring, Bring me your me fathers. Your fathers. <laughs> Bring me your fertile fathers. Oh, oh. Ooh, gross. I don't want that at all. <laughs> Why'd you have to bring it there? I know it was Father's Day elite recently, but gross. <laughs> oh, gross. Okay, you made it worse. You brought it there back. Gross. Uh, next. Each family mails a father to Steve. Steve... <laughs> Make sure you got the right post to Chunny. <laughs> Stick it to his face. Steve's hair is no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a way to say that the man's bald. That's the way about to talk your way around the Super Bowl. That, the Steve's <laughs> hair. You're not allowed to. Bald is a brand name that is not sponsoring us. You're not allowed to say the word <laughs> it's, bald. It's like somebody like our age became bald recently, and you're trying to tastefully say that they're bald. You're like um, without specifically being like. So he has um, he's got no hair. There's no. <laughs> there's nothing up there. Uh, if I'm, I'm a, 
his hair was canceled? Did I did I say that right? It's in terms of shape of head, I'm gonna say egg. It's I'm gonna very say eggy. Egg. His hair is very shiny, kind yep. of skin like. Yeah, non existent. Steve Harvey continued. We talked to a hundred pounds of bees. What would pasta <laughs> do on a computer? <laughs> we talked to one hundred pounds of bees. Survey says bees. <laughs> what would pasta do on a computer? <laughs> Smith father buzzes on Steve's Harvey. Smith father <laughs> poke him. Smith, Smith father message red sauce. The answer board dings. Message red sauce is number four answer. Steve Harvey's face shatters, and now he hosts even harder. <laughs> <laughs> it shatters, and now, now he has a scowl on. He's just like, I'm ready now. I wasn't ready before. That's like it's like some anime stuff. Like, his face shatters. Like, <laughs> you are already dead. <laughs> Nani? Majide. <laughs> Steve Harvey. That Other father, even... <laughs> can you guess nicer? Family 2 father. Download plate. (laughs) Download plate is number 3.5 answer. Family two cheers. They have been family for several minutes. They are all (laughs) fathers. Oh, no. (laughs) How'd they choose which the best father to send up? I mean, they have to be family. So presumably it's a father and his father and the great grandfather and the great great grandfather. Or his wife also, it just just looks like a man wearing a wig and has a mustache. (laughs) They're all the same person, but they all have different clothing on. The wife's trying to do like a man's voice. She's like, yeah, um, you know, sports. (laughs) It's me. um, It's me, other dad. It's me. dad also. I just celebrated father. My wife's the best. Mom, why are you making that voice? Listen, it's our bit. We're doing a bit. You gotta, you gotta really. We are all fathers. We're all fathers here. This is the fun joke. It's a fun joke. Feud. Steve Harvey. Game will die without more answers. I will not bury the game. My shovel is busy running Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Shigeru? <laughs> Shigeru? <laughs> Reggie? Reggie? Wait. It's Reggie fils Steve Harvey? Oh, my God. My body is ready for that crossover. Next. Family two father to raise his hand. He wants to be Mr. Guess. Family <laughs> two father to. I am married to a pasta, so I know the truth. Website a garlic. Everyone in planet. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ever, just Everyone in planet. Good answer. Aliens Me- in the stratosphere are just like, what the fuck happened? Everybody yelled at the same time Everybody, about garlic. About garlic. That's the message we're sending to space. I do love garlic. Answer and board I guess the dings. world does too. Answer board dings. Website a garlic is number three answer. Steve Harvey. How is that good? And I am bad. <laughs> <laughs> answer board dings. How is that good? And I am bad is number one answer. Steve Harvey <laughs> wins the families and becomes <laughs> the car. <laughs> End of Family Feud episode. I have finally gained my freedom. <laughs> I'm out of here. And you just like, form of Camaro. See you, you just... suckers, later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Family 1 and 2. Transformers 5 featuring me as Bumblebee. <laughs> I like the idea of the father looking at his spaghetti wife and just being like, I thought we had it. And this, I didn't know Steve Harvey could just come in and answer it anytime. I know the answer. Website a garlic. And Steve Harvey's like, nope, I win the car because I am the car. <laughs> That's a pot toast. You got to take Steve Harvey with you. You never thought that the car could be Steve Harvey at the same time. I enjoyed that. I More think like it Steve needed. Steve Carvey. Got him. I think that. Is... <laughs> got him. It's... Nope. Uh, I think. That they the only thing they are missing is the Steve Harvey face. When somebody says anything vaguely sexual, it's like a category of just like, <laughs> what's something that you do in the bedroom? And he just somebody he just goes shatters. sex, like <laughs> s- s- kissing my wife, and he just like, <sighs> like he just can't. Uh, oh, I do. He <laughs> he gets. Excuse it's like he gets a fan out, and he goes like, I do declare. I, I was. You were raised here. better than this. Maybe you weren't. And everyone's dying on the show. 
because yeah, exactly. He can't, he can't believe it, and they can't believe it. Nobody can believe it. And you know that now the people who like the the writers, the quote unquote writers of the show, who like write the, the questions for the like, show. Yeah, I guess. Well, they write the que- they write the questions, and they're like, "We asked one hundred women, what is something you wear underneath your pants?" And someone's like, "Underwear." And Stevie's like, Steve's like, "Oh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and you can't know, do it. The, can't do it. And you know that the writers of that question, they're they're just trying to get him into that into that face. How can I want to be a writer of questions for Family Feud? That then seems it would like be, a low effort job. I it's think it's a very I could do low that. effort. I think maybe they like they they burn the midnight oil making. Maybe that's the side job of the Jeopardy guy, like whoever mm. makes questions for Jeopardy. Maybe it's like the same person who does that, and like you think it's the same person. He's like, or it's Wheel like, Fortune. It's his like much less accomplished younger brother. Like this is Harold. <laughs> he writes questions for Jeopardy. Oh yes, <laughs> what is permanent employment? Oh. <laughs> and this is his younger brother, Brant, and Brant writes questions <laughs> for Family Feud. <laughs> One's erudite, the other is just a, a bumpkin. I like to think that that uh, Family Feud has a man on retainer named 100 Men. <laughs> we, we asked 100 <laughs> Men, what are you doing tonight? He said, eating a frozen pizza by himself. Show me eating a frozen pizza by himself. <laughs> number oh! one Jeez, yay! good answer good answer <laughs> i thought you were gonna say the person who writes questions for jeopardy is is alex trebek's brother brent trebek, <laughs> brent trebek. who just is is like what about me mother no mother don't you love me old brenty no alex is the good boy you're just nothing <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> my mother said i have a face for radio or the back <laughs> room of television it's even you don't even have they don't even have a voice for radio they have a, a mind for television <laughs> by my arms and i have the nose for television the, the <laughs> let me take a sniff of this smells like good programming <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of good programming oh wait hit me with this transition transition this going. it's it, technically it was a, I, that implies that it was television it wasn't television i have a movie review for you Yes, I'm just singing the Family Feud theme song now. We're gonna get sued. Um, We're uh, getting copyright infringement struck. Let's do it now. I watched a movie called Highlander. Ooh, Highlander. This is actually on my list. So tell me, tell me about it. Do you know anything about Highlander? Not a whole lot. I know that it's on my list. It has probably one of the best pitches for a movie. Like, are one of the best premises ever, because the premise is that they don't exactly say it, but I I presume that it's like once a generation or so, somebody's born who is immortal. Okay. And so all these immortals uh, of have to like kill each other. What? And there can only be one. Why? So they're so they're immortal. Nothing can kill them except for being beheaded. What? Why? And so. You and can so, be immortal. Why would you go trying to kill somebody? Because Just hide. Because they, it's like a biological thing. Of they have a need to like eventually. There is a thing called the gathering, which is what the movie is about. Is everybody goes to New York? All the all the immortals left go to New York, and there there can only be one. That's the big thing from Highlander. There is there can one. only be one? Yeah, there can only be one. Right. So it's a great pitch because it the main character is from like fifteen hundred something. Um, and he's a Scottish Highlander okay. that uh, gets killed in a battle, but then he heals like the next day, and everyone's like, "You're a witch! Get out of here!" <laughs> um, and then he, it's in like modern day, so it it's a really cool movie because it cuts back and forth. The movie starts with just this brooding guy at a wrestling match, and he's just frowning, and you're just like, "Wait, is that the protagonist? He can't even enjoy a fucking awesome wrestling match, an '80s <laughs> wrestling match, which is the best thing." Of just two beefy boys. It's two not even beefy like, boys punching each other. They're just punching each other, and he's just scowling. And there's like an old man who's like, "You see in this," and he's just thinking about something. And then he gets up and he goes out into a parking garage, and a man confronts him, and he's just like, 
hello, McCloud. And he's just like, mm. and then he pulls a katana out. Oh my Our God. main character pulls out an ancient katana. This other guy pulls out a sword. They get in a battle. Love it. In a parking garage? <laughs> in a parking garage. And then that starts, uh, and then, of course, the main character wins, cuts off his head. And then that starts the police investigating him. <laughs> <laughs> and That's then the, I have to say that is the most rational response to that event yeah. that I could possibly have. The police are getting involved. You just beheaded a man. Yeah, you can't just do that. Like, <laughs> and then, uh, then it cuts like it cuts back and forth between pr- present day and his background, which I thought was like a neat way. They could have had all the background stuff be in the beginning, but it, it was good for pacing. Um, and there's. Uh, the main antagonist of the movie is an LR mortal, and he's played by Clancy Brown, who you might know as the voice of Mr. Krabs. And he was also like the prison. Yeah, he was the prison guard and like Shawshank Redemption. If you saw him, you'd probably know him because he he does a lot of like character work. Okay. Um, and he's a fucking caveman from Russia who's like from like BC, <laughs> and he's just the best fucking warrior in the world. And it's and of course it's going to come down to him and forever. and the main character been training. Yeah, so he's great. Um, and in the ba- in the uh, so he's the antagonist, and like he in modern days, where like a leather jacket with spikes on it and stuff, and oh he has God. this big, great broadsword. It's great. Um, and the immortals can't uh, they can't die, they can't sire children, and they can't. What was the last thing? Oh, they and then they have other rules of like they can't fight on holy ground. Which only comes up once, which okay. is like, it's an interesting world because it has just the right amount of rules, but is still very vague. Okay. There's some, like, I had to be like, is it every century that they're, oh, let's go with just that. Just hand wavy. Whatever. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, if you get your head cut off, there's like enough things that you think about that you're just like, wait a second. Uh, if, if there's been immortals forever and there's one every generation, how did the first guy know that he had to kill everybody and also was he living just a fantastic life until the next guy was born he's like and then he was something's like something's awoken inside of me i need to I kill must... him it's like but but chuck you've worked your whole life as a as a as a nope. public health <laughs> no nope, gotta kill somebody you've been, you're a civil servant you've been helping people no, for, for 55 no, get years. me my sword uh, get me my sword honey this is a like, total oh, shift <laughs> i gotta invent swords i gotta invent swords i don't so know what that cut is this dude's head off uh and then so in the in the uh flashback scenes it shows how uh our main character connor mcleod who the actor for him is just so his accent so weird okay because because it goes back and forth between scottish and like tommy Wiseau, hmm. and they even like kind of mention this in the thing of he's getting interviewed by police and they're just like you got a weird accent where are you from? And he just looks at him and goes, lots of places. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, this kind of makes sense it's that his Scottish, accent okay, would be yeah. like vague at this point because he's been alive for 500 years. Um, but also, and so I, I talked to my dad about it. And I'm like, he's also not a great, he's not very charismatic. Mm-hmm. He's, it's not like a John claude Van Damme where you're like, oh, he's muscly and he's, yeah, let's just carry it on that. Like he can barely right. act, but that's fine. Right. He's like, he doesn't act and he also... I I read some things about him, and apparently his eyesight is so bad that he was, like, struggling with the sword fights. And I'm like, why'd you get this guy? <laughs> also, I was like, weren't okay, there, maybe... Uh, weren't there other people in the casting call for this character? I don't know. And then I was... My dad's like, he was Scottish, right? And I looked it up. No, he's French. Great. Why'd you just get this random French <laughs> why guy? You, why did you just go find someone from Scotland? It doesn't seem I that hard. I don't get it. Uh, but, like, the... And also, I'm just gonna point out, like, the the, the general plot is very just, like by the book it is the most by like if i told you the elements you're like love interest bad guy mm-hmm. oh there's a mentor guess who the mentor is fucking sean connery woo woo we got him <laughs> and he plays a he plays a spaniard but he sean does not connery. even try and he's like i'm a spaniard I'm a- <laughs> and you're like, no sean you aren't <laughs> can't you tell by my spanish accent it's even worse because he's just like i'm a spaniard never mind i'm an egyptian from like <laughs> 200 bc and you're just Thanks, like you're neither of those Thanks, things you're not no, even close i'm gonna say hard no on that buddy and so he gets trained up this is a plot hole that i didn't understand of why is he training his competition 
Like, for some reason, oh, Sean see, Connery shows up. He's oh. also an immortal, and he's like, I'm here to train you because you just had the quickening, which is basically you figured out you had powers. The quickening! Um, he's, oh! And then he, like, throw, he go, they go into, like, Loch Ness or something, and he throws him out the boat, and he just is underwater. He's like, well, I can breathe! This is fine! And then okay. he just walks back to shore, trying to sneak up on him, and he, he trains him. Great. Um, and he has, like, a wife and stuff. And then, of course, the mentor, guess what happens to the mentor? Probably dies. He dies from the ba- the bad guy. Oh, no. Oh, no. I never but saw it coming. It's weird. Like, it's an interesting world because the immortals aren't all, like, combative. Like, he's, f- there's a scene where he's, like, friends with another immortal. And he's just like, I hey, what's up, buddy? And they just, like, meet on a bridge. And he's like, yeah, remember we had a party in, like, 1700? It was great. That was a great like, party. <laughs> we're just, like, we're chilling with each other. And then, like, that character, of course, there can only be one. So, like, he gets killed later. Um, so but this, it's just, and so I'm like, this main, is interesting. Our main character is only out to kill one specific other guy. No, there, technically he's there's only supposed to be one, but he he kills like one person in the thing. It's just a setup. Um, it, it could have been a cool like blood sport kind of tournament, but mm. I I like it more of just like dudes in New York just pulling out swords from their it's trench coats old- and then. <laughs> like in the fucking corner <laughs> also anytime that they kill another immortal there's like a big lightning effect and they like their eyes roll back and they like float up and i'm like are they leveling up like what's happening and they never address it and i don't know That's... i don't know if they get more powerful Maybe it's just like killing another immortal gives them an extreme high and uh you know that they're just they're just chasing the buzz they're chasing the crazy train yeah uh but it's a great it was it's a very fun movie. It has so many seams to it that I thought were funny. Mm-hmm. Because to be honest, I was I watched this under the influence, but I still was like, "Hey, what the fuck?" Of like they had <laughs> like slow mo- enough to be like, "Wait a second. <laughs> Something was collapsing and there was a slow motion shot of them and I looked at one of the actors and it was very obviously a stunt double with like a wig on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, hey, you could have had, like had a hero shot of like just put it in. Like, why do you focus on him? Few things in life make me quite as happy as a stunt double that it is obviously not the actor. Just a stunt. It has like a, <laughs> it's supposed to be bald, but it has like just barely put it. Like they just put a thing on his like, head. I don't know. Like, put this on. You'll be fine. Get out there. Whatever. Uh, things I liked every uh, every immortal that you saw had a different sword from different ages. Cool. Like the That's main awesome. character had a katana. Uh, th- another person had like a rapier. The main bad guy had this giant broadsword. Like it- that's cool. It had a lot of history. Like everybody from different time period. I'm like, that's neat. Um, the sword fights were cool, but even with the like obvious stunt doubles, you're like, this is neat. And I like the the idea. It's a good pitch, and it works for only one movie. They ended up making four movies. <laughs> There can only <laughs> there can only be four. <laughs> that was one of the reviews for the second one was there should have been only one. There should have been only one. <laughs> because first one, good movie. I would absolutely recommend it. It's like it's too good to be a B movie, but it's that like eighties, like, I wanna sit down, I wanna enjoy just like a fun story. Uh the second one is apparently one of the worst movies ever made. Love it. And makes no sense because it <laughs> takes all the fantasy things and puts it into like sci-fi. I didn't watch the movie. It apparently just goes full sci-fi and it's like in the year 2024. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, and then just kind of final thoughts on it. Hey, uh, I know you have to have a love interest in these things. That's just par for the course. By by law, you actually have to write in a love interest. You you have to, but I hate the I don't know what to call this, but it's it's when some it's not like it's kind of like when a nurse falls in love with their patient. But in this case, it is a police forensic person investigating him falling in love with him. Wait the main a second. character Hold on. This police investigator <laughs> starts investigating him because he literally beheaded a person. Yes. And she figures it out because uh, wh- he, like, whacks his katana into a wall and then he, like, takes it out. And apparently there's, there's this huge chunk that she pulls out of the wall in, like, a scene. It's like the size of my fingernail. Okay. And I'm like, if your f- sword is having chunks that big fall out of it, it's a very bad it's sword. It's a bad sword. You should but get a new sword. And also, she's- you probably shouldn't be stabbing into concrete to begin with. She's like, this is Japanese steel. Four hundred. It's folded two hundred times. And I'm just like, oh, a weeb. I oh, see. Ah, a master of the blade. I see. 
and then they like she starts falling in love with him even though he has zero charisma and i'm just like and i'm like but he's a but he's a murderer i know in the context <laughs> of the film like we're rooting for him and he has reasons for murdering but he's not even a charismatic murderer he's just no a, he's a bland murderer he's just the hero and so we accept it because we have to you've but been hit he- by you've been struck by the bland murderer but like I <laughs> investigating a man for murder and being like he is good looking is just wild <laughs> to me. Just I mean everybody me, like, everybody has their past and it may be also their present, but you yeah. know, he, nobody's perfect. Hey, I know you beheaded a few people in front of me. And you don't like, plan on stopping, <laughs> but, but hey, want to go you, out. But also and also you stopped only because there's nobody else to decapitate <laughs> on your thing. But like, hey I, I swear it's out of my system. I'm done. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Fine. I'm good. Um but it was a good movie. It had one moment that actually made me like uh, tear up a little of he had a wife in Scotland, uh and she like there's a scene where she's like they're having fun like she's like chasing geese and stuff like oh great they're having a great village life and then they're like you see her walking up and you're like oh she's old now like they put old age makeup on this woman and he's like holding her as she's dying and he's still young and she's like why did you stay with me and he's like because i love you because it's like we're... And, she, and then she's like Rem- like light a candle on my birthday just to remember me by and then he like does that in the movie that's nice and, and you're like this is a nice moment and i'm like that's true love that's that is immortal boy. this immortal man was just like i'm gonna stay with you until the last and then he burns their hut down and leaves <laughs> after she dies it's like i'm fucking done here he's like i'm gonna wander the earth now i'm gonna uh, walk across underneath the ocean yeah good movie i would recommend it all right. E- even just for Sean Connery just going, I'm a Spaniard. I'm a Spaniard. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Sean. We know you're Sean. not. Yep. Uh, next segment, please. Next segment for you coming right up, hot and ready. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. I have for you is another edition of, is this the onion? What's oh. going on here? All right. So, so you're going to offer me. This is when you offer me three stories, correct? Three stories, one of which is is true, and the other two are are from the Onion. Okay, I'm I ready. Hope, I hope you don't read. You're not a regular read and reader of the Onion. I am not. All right, number one. Headline number one: Petition calls on UK to declare war on New Zealand, then immediately surrender. <laughs> okay, we're all right. <laughs> number two. TikTok apologizes for giving platform to thousands of theater kids. <laughs> That's the onion. That's absolutely the onion. And number three, Mark Zuckerberg announces virtual roundtable with American hate groups to better understand how they work. Oh, oh. Hmm. I feel like robot Mark Zuckerberg would absolutely be like, let us evaluate <laughs> the hatred and see if we cannot create a better algorithm we need for to it. optimize our hatred i'm gonna say ooh. i'm gonna say the real one is the the great brit or uk needs to declare war on New you Zealand think it's the real surrender. one because i don't know what the article would be for the onion i don't know what kind of joke they would try to make whereas the other two i'm like okay i can imagine the article that comes from this mm. headline the other one i'm like where where are they going with this <laughs> Whereas well, real life would would absolutely go that way. You are correct. Yay! <laughs> so I that, feel terrible that it's correct. <laughs> Why? This, this is from the New Zealand Herald. So it says members of the UK public have launched a petition calling on the British government to declare war on New Zealand, then immediately surrender. The petition is the latest idea for a COVID nineteen strategy for the UK, where new ca- cases continue to climb. The petition suggests the British government declares war on New Zealand and then surrenders to the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, I'm sorry, I mispronounced that, can take over the reins in the UK as part of the international law that states that you become the de facto government of a country when you defeat in war. The British... (laughs) (laughs) The British government has shown itself to be completely incapable of controlling the COVID-19 virus outbreak in the UK and has the highest death rate per head of population in the world, the petition states. The New Zealand government has, on the other hand, carefully controlled the outbreak, presumed presumable based on the same science as the British government and is now COVID free. Okay. 
So they're suggesting basically just that they give up and say, please handle our COVID for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's wild. I think okay. this is a great idea. I think this is a this is a last ditch effort by people. This is amazing. To... I didn't know that you become the government of the place that I mean, it makes sense, kind of. But I, guess... I always assumed of like, oh, we give up. You're going to just let us like maybe they like change leaders. Right. It's a very, like, old school, like, very, like, medieval way of thinking about it, where it's like, oh, you won? Okay, I guess we're yours now. Yeah, like, you're, we're, we're your vassals now, I suppose. This is also brings up the question of, if someone declares war on you, can you say no? <laughs> <laughs> um, it doesn't, uh... It's mostly reciprocal because they're gonna attack you. It's kind of like it's kind of like a uh, breakup where, like, if one person says we're broken up, like the other person can't be like, "No, we're not." Yeah, basically. <laughs> but if the, if you declare war, and I'm like, "Fine, you can declare war, but I'm not declaring war back at you." You could have a one sided effort. <laughs> <laughs> they just like land in New Zealand. They're like, "Welcome to New Zealand. <laughs> Thanks for coming. We're here. Thanks for coming. We're expecting you." <laughs> We got some. <laughs> we got some treats for you. Would you like? To, and the soldiers are just getting cookies and stuff. And they're, like, like, they're like, I'm well, feeling bad about this. I, I feel like we should just stay here and forget. We just say we never made it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we should just. We should just say, let's not and say we did. Let's not How about say that? we did. Yeah, we took over New Zealand, but um, they were so nice about it that we're gonna let them keep keep it. Actually, and then actually they're gonna take us over. Yeah, if they sent one soldier to the like prime minister's place what it's like capturing a uh, an, an rts game it would be like capturing a, a command point like sending one guy with a flag across through an enemy country <laughs> just walking he's running through the british countryside oh. just like, ah. <laughs> and then he gets there and he's like ours and they're just like ah dang it you ah, got it you got it it's capture the flag you got the flag all right got that's the flag. it i want to hear about these other ones these See? fake these fake ones these were just headlines from the from the Onion. Oh, they're just uh, like you didn't read the articles. No, I just I just saw the headlines. Okay. <laughs> that funny. I thought the the one about TikTok is hilarious. TikTok apologizes for giving platform to thousands of theater kids. I think that's fucking hilarious. It's absolutely like the <laughs> the vibe. If you ever watch any TikTok, I've only watched like a compilation. Right. And I'm like, these are absolutely theater kids, yes. just like chilling Be on being here. extra on the internet. Yeah, because they have nothing else to do right that's now. Right. And then Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a little too real to be. Yeah, that funny. one was. <laughs> that one was. I was like, that one was like, oof, that one. oof, a little too too real, a little too much. That's it for my segment. Can I hand? I'm gonna pass it back back to Will in the studio for this next one. Well, here I am in the studio, ready to do another segment. This is a favorite segment of ours. It's a favorite. It's a fan favorite. It's Amazon erotica. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, this is, this goes with my theme a little bit today of like a little bit medieval, mm. Fan some fantasy. Let's get some swords and sorcery in here. Let's get some, you can have, you can, That's... you can talk about my sword if you're not talking. You know, I, I you know what we're Sorry. missing from our, our sexy, our sexy, uh, erotica was some good world building. Yeah. And so what I picked some, <laughs> some choice selections. You're right. That's what was missing. For me, I, I just couldn't get into it because there wasn't a coherent backstory to what was happening in the world. <laughs> there was no werewolves on the cover. And now <laughs> let's get into Fever Fay, a shifter fay reverse harem fantasy romance. Sorry, Dark what? Fay King's book one. Sorry, what's a reverse harem? Uh, it is a woman having a bunch of men. I think that the the word harem should just be a... You know, I might be may be like newfangled ideas over here, but why isn't harem a gender neutral term? That's what I was thinking. This is like the the term of reverse racism. I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> it is just racism. <laughs> right. It could just it could go in either the, direction. I it has to be that... it has to be clarified either way what's going on. Yes, but anyway, let's get into uh, this. This is by Meg Jueme X. Sure, I'll believe it. It's it's uh, I don't know if it's a real name or not, because her icon is it looks like a bitmoji. So you don't know. Uh, yes to the hottest, baddest fakings. No to be in their bitch. 
<laughs> what an opening line. Yeah. Oh, you've got me hook, line, and sinker on this one. <laughs> I mean, this is this is supposed to be fake. I've got to be like, when my parents mysteriously disappear, leaving me to raise my six crazy younger siblings, my dreams for college are dashed. It gets worse when someone sends a slew of monsters after me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, well, what now? If raising your <laughs> six younger siblings wasn't bad That's enough? That's the afterthought. That's the, I'm, oh, I have to be, I have to raise my siblings. How do you also, not, there are monsters. At that point, how do you not just give up? You're like, I was already under the gun here. And you're going to throw monsters at me? Yeah. I already have to feed these kids. Now you're going to try to eat me? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, absolutely not. Their ult- untimely arrival is followed by three devastatingly hot fae who stalk me. You know what's very, very hot? When somebody stalks you. Especially yeah. a hot fae. See, see you later, college dreams. I gotta deal with these hot boys following me around. Now let's get to these these hot fae. These, these are gonna be my cosplays um, when things open back up. Baron, the pompous, dominating summer king. Yo, thinks who, I'm a you, dark fay and wants my head. Excuse me, what? <laughs> he wants to murder me. He loves me. My father will gorge on your entrails. Oh. <laughs> I'm the summer king. I'll be in my summer home. <laughs> my summer home has three yachts. <laughs> <laughs> then he changes his mind and declares me his fated mate. Really, t- 180 on this. Bring me her head. Wait, what a beautiful head it is. <laughs> <You're>, and then... <laughs> her response, hell's a no. Hell- <laughs> hell's <laughs> dash a slash no. Hell's a no. Hell's a no. Especially person- now that he wants me to prove my worth? Really? Then there's Rowan. Excuse the me, excuse cool- me. You're stalking yeah. me and you want me to prove my worth? You're the one, sir. You're the worst. Then there's Rowan, the possessive and cruel Winter King. Not none of these are great. These what? well also possessive and dominating are synonyms. So they're similar. Who offers to protect me from the assassins, but only if I accept his obnoxious courtship requests. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good trade-off. He gets to like send yeah. he gets to like hold stand outside your, your house with a boombox above his head. And you, in exchange, get to not get murdered by assassins. This seems like a pretty good deal to me. And finally, there's Night King Rydsrum, a dangerous and mysterious fae with an ass that doesn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks he has ever read to play me like a fiddle? Oh, my God. You know, the Summer King and the, and the Winter King really had their boundaries drawn. And the Night King they- was like, no, but I'm always here. I am. <laughs> was like there's a real heat miser frost miser thing going and then he's just like i am the night king (laughs) and it's like oh i think that night king with the ass that won't quit seems probably the best yeah i definitely yeah too bad for them i'm not the docile type they're they're used to commanding i might want them but i have no intention of joining the trail of broken hearts and bodies in their wake for i hold a deep dark secret their arrival has woken in me the very forbidden magic they've been hunting, and I, Evelina, Eve, Eve Evelina, <laughs> and, and and me, uh, evil, 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 Lynn, evil, 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 am going to have a wicked good time teaching these Alpha Fae a lesson. So, Hell, excuse me, hell's a no. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a second book in this called frost fay a fay court reverse harem fantasy romance dark fay king's book two mother of dragons breaker of chains yes <laughs> starts with a quote i'll ravish you for hours days i won't ever stop Jeez, that's the fay com- king's coming on a, we're coming on a little strong there buddy that's the fay king's ritual of claiming sorry i asked <laughs> 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 sorry sorry i asked the three fey kings insist i'm their fated mate and they're terrible at sharing their spot daddy i want the woman now i think the three fey kings really just need to just hook up the three of them and get it out of their systems now here's the question because okay they seem to be all be competing i don't think that's how har- harems work well, I don't know a lot about harems. It's impossible I, but I presume... not to get jealous in a harem, William. Is it not? I don't know anything about harems other than just, like, 
generally being on the internet. Uh, what do you? But the, what? Excuse me. What? Yeah, you never, my boy. You're such a sweet summer child. Sometimes <laughs> I don't go to Google and search what. What is harem like? What is harem? Harem is when lots of anime ladies like you, even <laughs> though you're plain and boring. You're not interesting. You're just a bland murderer. Yep. I don't. So these guys are. It's not like I was assume harem is like I have a a, a roster of dudes. Oh, you that I can roster. bang. You can select your character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you get, you can bang any of them. Uh, I know I should turn my back on them before they ruin me. They're too ruthless, feral, possessive, and, well, too hot for me to feel safe. <laughs> You're so hot, I feel unsafe. <laughs> oh, God, you might kill me. Oh, that's so hot. <laughs> a girl would have a better chance of swimming with sharks than walking among the predatory fae, let alone tangling with them between the sheets. Ooh. But did I adhere to my own advice? Which yes. <laughs> Did Book I? is over. Yes. Very yes. good. I'm uh, very good at discipline. I, I told the Night King that he could go fuck himself, and he was like, oh, well. He was okay. like, good enough for me. See you then. Uh, and now my unbridled lust complicates everything, leading me straight into the Dawn Queen's trap to excuse, claim. Th- <laughs> excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Well, maybe. Are we just staking like- out times of the day now? Is that what we're yeah. doing? Yeah. I can't wait for the the noon king. I can't wait for the mid morning nap prince. <laughs> the 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 afternoon, but still the sun is in the sky. <laughs> Wonderful, it's very high in the sky. The Duke Twilight of, King. The Duke of just before dinner, when you're kind of hungry and angry, but you t- can't eat a <laughs> snack because dinner's almost ready. The the king of the post lunch slump. Mm, that's the, uh, a good king. <laughs> that's a good king. The the midnight society is just a bunch of dudes, <laughs> a bunch of fae. Uh, it sent me into the Dawn Queen's trap to claim the kings for herself. She thrust me into the wild hunt, a deadly game no one has ever escaped. And then, favor fever fae is a full length reverse harem friend of perfect fans of. And then they list a bunch of, I didn't, who are all these writers? <laughs> They're like, if you like this, 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 and this, then you might like this. If you like J.R.R. Tolkien, you'll very much enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> a real C.S. Lewis I am. Mm. For oh, God. <laughs> fans of Dickens might enjoy this. I, <laughs> they recommend, they have, they have recommended things. And it's just, one is just called The Fifth Survivor, What Dreams? Gross. I'm out. <laughs> it's, Gross. And it's very bad. Hell's a no. Oh, okay. Well, I might keep that for another day because it's, I just, skimming it is the is insane. Um, <laughs> it's too insane. I can't handle it. It's too much. There's a lot of Faye stuff. Will, why are you surprised about this? I think this woman also made a whole series other than just she just makes reverse harem books well she's got a whole universe that she's built out she may as well plop some books in there get some stories going these are dark, dark fake kings there's a dark fake court book series by a different is. person this is this is a whole world this is a whole d- dive on in this is a whole world i don't want to there's so <laughs> many reverse harems uh yeah i guess that's it that's, that, we're that's gonna it. do a, that's our pod that's our pod ne- right there. next time next time we'll do other i might do probably next next episode but i do have other medieval fantasy <laughs> well it's uh, like stories. i've got other bits planned but this is gonna take up all, all the time <laughs> well, well i gotta read all of them what, <laughs> I, what can i say well, well, segment city book club i one member will oh geez. we could just we could just make this the whole podcast is me reading erotica <laughs> If we really wanted it. Uh, but we're not because we like doing the other things. And we like you all as listeners. And I feel like this would really <laughs> alienate a certain <laughs> amount of the listener base if I only did erotica. So thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode of Segment City. Remember, if you want to send us an email, send it to segmentcitypodcast at gmail.com. If you have like any segments that you want to suggest, anything you want to send us. Also, we read the reviews you guys uh, put in so remember to give us a five star rating 
uh, leave us a review. We love getting those. And also hit up our YouTube at seg- our, our Twitter at Segment City. Our YouTube is Segment City. Uh, and that's about it. Except we have a big thank you to give, don't a we, Theo? Big old thank you. Thank you to Rachel Robinson. She does our intro music. She is great. She deserves your praise. She has a podcast of her own called Create Loud. It is mm-hmm. wherever you get this podcast. I'm sure you can find that one too. So mm-hmm. go go check go check it out. No excuses. Yep. And I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Uh because I am I have a secret for you, Theo. I am the Night King. Oh no. I am <laughs> the Night King. Thanks Ooh. for joining us. We'll see the Night King next time here Ooh. on Family Feud. Hey, how's it going? You wanna bang? <laughs> <laughs> Are you offering to bang Steve Harvey? This is a different novel. <laughs> he makes that face. Oh, like, oh, mama! I think I think the devil wants to bang me. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.